impacting upon us again today. Jesus said, He that will take this little child and believe God like a little child, that is the one that we have to give We ask for childlike faith. He that will believe me like a little child. We trust God for grace to trust you and to give you like a little child in our time. We receive that grace now and always. Even when the things you are showing us now, we cannot believe them. We cannot, we cannot relate with them because we can't wrap our brains around them. But we pray for grace to trust you. Even when we cannot trace you, to know that you cannot be standing our lives. That you are the creator of the universe. You made the universe in six days. Our lives are too small to be mismanaged by you. We receive grace. Give us grace to trust you more. To trust you more to, to groom these children in the ways of the Lord. So that they will not turn out to be wrong children. They will not turn out to be strange children in their generation. They will not turn out to be children, sons and daughters of Bethlehem. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. flourish 
regardless of our time. Can you say that God wants me prosperous? Children, can you hear me? God wants me prosperous. God wants me blossoming. God wants me flourishing. Regardless of hard times. Even in your academics, God wants you blossoming. God wants you flourishing. It is true that mathematics is hard, but not for people like you. It is true that further mathematics is hard. They call it hard math. There's nothing like hard math. It is still mathematics. I get what I'm saying. Just for that. I get what I'm saying. It is true that chemistry, physics, uh, accounting, principles of bookkeeping, it is true that those subjects may be hard, but they should not be hard for you because you carry a grace to flourish even in the midst of academic hard times. It is true that some students may not make their way ahead in one city, but not you. Hello? I'm not going to talk to this morning. Can we shout hallelujah? It is true that some students may not pass down above 200. But not you. You are of a different breed. You are of a different blood. You belong to the group, to the blood of Jesus. You belong to the creed of Christ. You cannot afford to score less than the required cutoff for your course. Therefore, I decree that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the risen God, Every student under the sound of my voice, whether in nursery, whether in kindergarten, whether in primary, whether in secondary, whether in post-secondary, tertiary institution, university, I prophesy, whether in postgraduate, you will flourish in the midst of our times. Amen. In the name of Jesus, you are not permitted to repeat any class. In the name of Jesus, the Lord God of success shall be with you. In Jesus' name. So, in the course of this series, we be on observing and examining different ways to prosper and flourish in hard times. Number one, in the first week, check through your notes now as we recap, we said there is a way of divine direction. Number two, we said there is a way of being planted. Am I correct, please? The way of being planted, and that is found in Psalm 92, verse 13, that they that be planted in the courts, in the house of the Lord shall flourish, even in the courts of our God. So there is, there is a way of being planted. And I said that week that many are just coming to church as floaters. Imagine some parents whose children are supposed to participate in the children's presentation today, but because of their own recklessness and carelessness, I said this to their shame. Those children could not participate because, because the parents are perpetual late comers. Are you getting it? Such are not yet planted. They are just floaters. They are just numbers. They are not members yet. So when I say being planted, it goes beyond, I'm in church on Sunday. No! When did you come? Have the angels taken the roll call, the attendance, before you strode in as a big man or as a big woman, before your master? We better know what we are doing. Being planted is the reason why you will ever prosper. The reason why you will ever flourish. You will always be banking it until you are planted. I don't care the prophet praying for you. Except you are planted. There are certain levels of blossoming that will only be a day dreaming to you. You will only be wishing. You will never have it. Why? It is only those who are planted in the house of the Lord that can always flourish regardless of austerity or hard time. May the Lord give us grace in Jesus' name. Number three, which was last week, is the way of righteousness. We said there are two levels of righteousness. Uh, and we we said righteousness is the capacity to stand before God without guilt, without condemnation. Can you give me Romans 8 verse 1? Therefore, there is now no condemnation to us who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. So which means, number one, there is no condemnation for us who are in Christ. Me being in Christ, we call that positional righteousness. There's a level of righteousness that you don't have to do anything. You are just imputed, credited with that righteousness. Is there somebody, a multi-billionaire, I read recently, one of the Nigerian players in the Syria, in the Italian football league, an Indian man was going to buy the ball the actual ball that Luke Moore, Luke Moore, or whatever, used to score against Bayern Leverkusen. And he was quoting $15 million. 
That's billions of naira, 20 million naira, I mean billion naira when they calculated it. And I read the post of many Nigerians and they were saying, Oga, Oga, sell that ball fast. Oga is at home. Uh, buy a duplicate of that ball, give to your teammate to sign it again. And one guy said, why are we so particular about selling, selling properties in Nigeria, selling our birthright, that some things are meant to be kept for posterity. And one person will answer the guy, what? What, what punish posterity? What, what is posterity? Let the guy sell the ball. On that day of the land. I guess what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I said, praise the Lord. The Lord may give you his grace in Jesus' name. There is something, you see, that guy did not do anything apart from scoring that ball. I mean, scoring those goals. Once he scored those goals, his name entered the history. That in ever in the history of Champions League and Europa League, nobody has ever scored three goals actually in the final. Hello? So, he, he, he just, he just by, by that act, his name entered into that Guinness Book of World Records. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. And somebody was willing to part with so much money, 15,000, 15 million, 15 million US dollars, just to get that ball. And I was wondering, what is special about this ball? For this, for this Indian billionaire, he knew what he was pursuing. And I realized later, after the search on my own, that after several years, 20 years to come, that ball will be worth 20 times what that Indian man is, 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 is bidding for today. Can you admit to anybody? Don't sell your batch. Wait. This, this is somebody's preaching, somebody's word is money. Don't sell out now. Just wait. A young girl is about to commit adultery, fornication. Wait. Your, your, blood, your blood is too hot. Just calm down. After a while, this thing called sex, you'll be tired of it in marriage. Just calm down. A young man is about to, to, just, to just enter the town and paint everywhere red. Calm down. You are going to have all this thing later. Just calm down. Face your studies now. And the Lord will give us grace in Jesus' mighty name. Today, I'm going to be wrapping this series up by considering the way of diligence and faithfulness in the little of now. Say that again. The way of diligence is a short teaching this morning and faithfulness in the little of now. Sometimes what is given to you now does not seem to be much. But God expects two major things from you, sir. Man. Diligence. I'll be defining what diligence is. And faithfulness in the little. Diligence and faithfulness in the little. Can you give me the scriptures? Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10. First scripture now. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, thank you media, do it with what? Thy mind. That is what we call diligence. Whatsoever. Pastor, I'm not so buoyant. I'm only selling pure water. Congratulations. Some don't even have anything to do in Lagos. You are selling pure water. Do it with what? All your might. I'm an online marketer of product that people don't even know about yet. Congratulations. Do it, market it with all your might. Go to many blogs. Go to many popular blogs. Advertise your product. Do all you need to do. As long as it is a legit business. The Bible says whatsoever your hand find it to do, do it with Die my pastor. I go to people's houses during weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, to mop their floor, to wash their clothes. What a dignified job. Don't look down on your job. You are doing it to be able to meet needs of your family, to pay bills. Do it with all your mind. Never despise any work today when you have not seen a better one tomorrow. It is only fools that despise. Only fools despise what they have, the little they have at end today because of what they expect to come. An English proverb says, a bird in end is worth ten in the forest. A bird in end, a bird that you have caught is more than 200 that you are wishing to throw catapult at because your catapult may not even catch one. But you have one in your cage today with 10 
faithful and exact diligence. Again, whatsoever your hand findeth to do, the Bible says, do it with thy mind. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. There is a time that the, the, the most, the most hard working of us will wake up one day and back pay because of old age, not because you are afflicted by the devil, we don't allow you to sit down well, let alone doing any assiduous work. But the time comes now when you can push yourself. The time comes now when you can jump on a bike, up into a canopy, and, 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 and do all those many, many works now. Why not do it? Because the time is coming. In the grave that you are going, at the end of your life, there is no wisdom. The Bible says there is no knowledge, there is no work, there is no device in that place where you are going. So why not walk yourself out now? The Bible says, whatsoever your hand findeth to do, this is a message for Christians, whether for Christian young people or Christian elderly people. Christians are about the most, the, the, the laziest set of people on earth today. Why? We believe in favor. We believe in miracle. When, when, when you tell a believer, come and do this, we say, no, my God is too big for that. Pastor, I carry so much grace upon my head, I cannot do all that. Huh? You need to know, many of those who call great today, the many jobs they are about to endure in this same city of Lagos, before they blew, as you call it, you cannot blow until you are willing to be diligent and faithful even in the seemingly little of today. Say, may God give me grace. Now, Genesis 26, verse 12 is my case study this morning. The way of diligence and the way of faithfulness in the little. Genesis 26, 12 to 14. It's the story of Isaac. Having been told by God, don't go down to Egypt. Stay in this land. So, don't in this land. Guess what happened in verse 12? The Bible says that Isaac sold in that land. Say in that land. God has shown him by divine, divine direction. It is one thing for God to show you your destiny. It's another thing for you to take your destiny into your hands and sow into your destiny and, and begin to exact labor. Labor does not kill. It is lack of labor that kills people. Have you ever had somebody dies because of, of too much work? No. It is less work. No work that kills people. Hard work refines life. It does not kill people. I'm talking from experience. Then Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold. I know your mind will blow open when you see hundredfold. This man sold, let's say, twenty dollars, hundredfold of it in that same year. Everything is sold, came back double. That's been of wonderful. Came back double to him that same year. So wow, that is the God of multiplication. That is the God of, of, of awesomeness. But that awesomeness hinges on the fact that Isaac exacted labor. It does not. It is not easy to sow. Psalm one twenty six. Give me from verse four. Psalm one twenty six. Verse 4. Let's look at the graphical example of what it means to sow. The Bible calls this sowing with tears. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the strength in the south. Verse 5. Amen. They that sow, sometimes you sow in tears. Have you seen parents, mothers especially, praying for their children not to mismanage or not to miss their way in life? Praying for their sons, having to hold on to their legs in the middle of the night. Even when the sons don't even know who is holding my legs, but the mother, the praying mother is holding the leg. The praying father is sprinkling the oil, sprinkling the water, going to their room to anoint them, speaking over their atmosphere, that you will not be unlucky, that you will not, you will not be miserable in your journey. The, the Lord will show up for you. Even if it remains 15 seconds for you to miss your way, light will appear for you. That's a praying father, that's a praying mother. The Bible says sometimes you saw. In tears, but the consolation is that at the end of the day, we have to live in joy. But look at this this particular verse, verse 6. He that goeth forth, verse 6 now, he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, is going forth. Picture a farmer rising up 4 a.m., 4 30 a.m., early in the morning, 
carrying a bag of corn. That bag of corn could have been sold. That bag of corn could have been eaten by his family, immediate family. But he said, no, we are going to be denying ourselves of this bag of corn. We are going to be denying ourselves of this bag of millet. We are going to be denying ourselves of this bag of, of seeds. Because another season called harvest season is knocking at the door. I've told you before, anytime summer comes, summer is coming with a letter from winter. I am coming. Anytime winter comes, winter is coming with a letter, a notice from, from summer. I am still coming. When spring comes, it's coming with a letter from fall or autumn that I am coming. In Nigeria, dry season, when it comes, it's coming with a letter from the wet season. I am coming. Amatan, when Amatan comes, it's coming with a letter from the dry season. Come January, end of December, I am also coming. No season lasts forever. Are you in a season of tears, of laboring, of sowing without seeing results today? Congratulations, because that season cannot be forever. God is too faithful to allow you to plant all the life, never to reap. The Bible says that go ahead for to reap it. And bearing precious seed. Look at the look at the look at the certainty of the promise. Shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. Say rejoicing. Ah, after one year, it is an annual call. After two years, a biennial call. After three years, a perennial call. People begin to come. If it's for seven years or six years, people begin to come from Ibadan. Now it's a, it maybe it's based in uh, Osho State. People come from Ondo State. They come from the Kare. They come from Akoko Town to buy his own cocoa pot. Why? Because he has become a cocoa merchant. Having labored for seven years, you know what it means to watch over a tree for seven years. You could give up, but the Bible says it is with tears. I'm, I'm here to challenge every one of us. It's time for us to be diligent if we must see blossoming and flourishing. It will not come because of empty thoughts. Blossoming will not come to you because you are just sleeping all day. Many people think pastors are lazy, they just lie down, they just fast and pray. Oh my God, maybe, maybe let, let, let's just swap for one week. I bet you you will, you, will, you will regret that decision. Amen. 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 It's like if you're a full-time pastor, it's more than just sitting down at home. Sometimes somebody needs to attend you somewhere and you have to travel. Sometimes in the middle of the night you are, you are leaving your own family, leaving everything to attend to other people's needs. You think it's easy to do that. Sometimes you have to build capacity not because of yourself. Many of the prayers I pray today is not because of me. They are because of other people. Selflessness. That is what it takes to be diligent. Now, Isaac, go back to that Isaac story. 26 verse 12. Isaac sold in that land. Say, I will sow in my land. You know something? Everybody has got a land. You have a land. I have my own land. But sometimes when you enter some people's land, you see thorns, you see tissues, you see, you see everywhere overgrown with thorns. Because the owner of the land has not taken responsibility. It takes responsibility to be diligent, to be hard working. If you don't work at your life, nothing works for you. I was telling my boy some months back, they saw some level of work that I was doing, and I told them, if you are, if you take your life out, out of that way, I said, if you are easy on life, life will be hard on you. I said, but if you are hard on yourself, not like, if you are hard on yourself, life will be easy on you. And he said, wow. I said, yes, that, that is the key to eminence. It's called diligence. Please write this down. Number one, diligence is the pathway to eminence in life. You want to be eminence? E-M-I-N-E-N-C-E. -E. Diligence is the pathway to eminence in life. Number two, diligence is the way of greatness. You want to be great in any field of life. Hmm. Have you noticed that even the devil does not use lazy people? God does not use lazy people. Devil does not use lazy people. Have you seen those people that the devil is using all over the world today? Those terrorists. Do you think they are, they, are, they are lazy? If you think they are lazy, try and tie a grenade, a little bomb, or firecrackers on your body and try to jump from a cliff with the intent that the firecracker will just detonate and there will be an explosion and you die with the people you want to kill. You know what it means to die with the people you want to kill in the name of a religious crisis or in the name of a belief? No, those guys are not lazy. 
the people that go to consume people inside churches, in jaws, in Plato State, in Nigeria, they are not lazy people. The devil does not use lazy people. God hates lazy people. Who are you going to be useful to when you are lazy? 8 a.m. in the morning, you are not taking your bath. Uh, because nobody to hire me. Hire yourself, sir. I'm a graduate, I'm looking for a job, and you have been on this job for seven years. Something is wrong. Create a job for yourself. Someone said, create a job for yourself. Employ people in the process. Do something. The pathway to greatness is diligence. Write this down. Faithfulness. Please write. Faithfulness is the ticket to abundance and prosperity. Until you are faithful in the little, I'm going to be explaining this later, you are not qualified for much. Much. Much will always elude you when you are not faithful in the little. Are you a young man today serving somebody? Recently I was watching a movie, a new movie, what do you call it? Amma, 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 It's an evil film. And I was watching with my family and I was and we, we saw the tradition of the southeastern people in Nigeria, the Igbo people. This man, a wealthy merchant, specializes in selling ties in Lagos, had a big shop, got some boys. So they brought this guy, Amar Funa, or Amir Funa. Amir Funa, okay. Ah, Afa Amir Funa. Okay, Afa, Afa Amir Funa. To come and serve with him. Naturally, the tradition is seven years or so. So you serve a master for seven years. If you are faithful, after those seven years, he settles you. Gets you a shop, settles you with market, gives you free hand to come to a shop. This Afa, for short, but that I can never want to remove my teeth. Afa came brought by his mom. Mom dropped him, was looking like this is this what I'm going to do for the next time in my life? You, you will know that this one, this, this guy looked like a fish out of the sea. He didn't, he couldn't fit into that environment. After a while, some friends began to introduce him. Oh, this is how we do it. You will come. Everybody will eat their food and say, Small boy, come and wash the plates. I say, Yes, sir. You know, you will still carry the plates to come and wash. Long story made short, this guy was faithful. His master noticed something about him. He was always like Joseph, reports. The bad doings of the other guys. One day, a guy sold ties to a customer times three of the morning. And he was challenging the guy. And he reported to come to the master. And the master told him, you know, this thing that you have done is right. But what he has done too is not wrong. He's trying to make more money for himself. But I love you for being faithful. That is not all. A time came when custom seized the goods of the master. This guy being a son of a former custom boss went to the custom office at Wolf and began to negotiate. From 10 million naira down to 2 million naira, he was able to save the master. What about driving now? The master was so elated and he said, I'm going to settle this guy. There was a senior of them who thought if the master would settle anybody, it would be me. Long story made short, to make the matter worse, the master even asked him to go and get a bottle of wine and cola nuts, which the elders used to bless. It was that senior that was asked to go and get it. And all of a sudden, they found themselves in the house of a farm spirit. And the guy was wondering, you are not supposed to do this in the house. What's in this? my junior's house. And he said, Afam, farm, bring those things. Ah, the guy's hand fell. Nigga, I want to bless you. The guy, because the master knew, the guy did not know, that the master knew he has been unfaithful in the last years, last seven years or last eight years. Not only that, sleeping with the bosses, with the master's daughter behind his back. All manner of atrocity, this guy has been committed. And guess what? When it was time to release somebody, it was somebody that came several years after him that was released. It's called faithfulness. Hello? Your abundance today is a measure of faithfulness. In that little salary you are collecting, how faithful are you with your family? Your family cannot eat good food with the with just with the excuse that I, I am not buoyant enough yet when you get to a restaurant. Everything on me, seven people, on you, a family of three is hungry at home, yet you cannot cater for them. And God sees 
this guy is not faithful. Even with the salary of 150,000, is he complaining? How can I promote him to 1.5 million? You can't go. Don't let me dwell on myself this one. I want to show us a few scriptures on diligence. Media, you're going to work with me. Proverbs 6, 16. 11 of, 11 of them, very quickly. Scriptures on diligence. Please write them down and listen to them being read. Proverbs 6, 6 to 8. Proverbs 6, 6 to 8. Go to the ant, thou slugger. The word slugger means lazy. Consider our ways and be wise. Verse 7. Which have no guide, overseer, or ruler? Have you noticed the ant? Which having none of those leaders provides a meat in the summer, it will never fail, and gathereth a food in the harvest, rainy season. So, ants will not need to come out in rainy season. Why? They are prepared for the rainy day. Are you like the ants? The Bible says, if you are lazy, take a key, take a lesson. Go for a tutorial class in our modern day world. Go for a tutorial class and sit down. Pay your tuition fee and learn from the ants. Who during summer prepares for winter? And at winter does not have to come out because he has sufficient in the store for himself and his family. Number two scripture. Please look at Proverbs 10 verse 4. Quickly. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Let's see how much we can cover. Proverbs 10 verse 4. It becometh poor. Can we do it together once you go? It becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent shall make rich or make it rich. You know you are dealing with a slack hand. If even when you are before your boss taking instruction, you are still pressing your phone. You are not taking notes, but you are just pressing your phone, chatting, taking Facebook feeds, taking Twitter messages, and taking all those nonsense because you have a slack hand. A slack hand comes from a, from a slack mind. And most of our young people have slack minds and slack hands today. Attention span so short because of this issue of slack mind and slack hands. I know you will blame it on technology, but in the midst of the same technology, we have Nigerians in diaspora. They are doing so well. Recently, a Nigerian guy won the chess championship. It takes technology to be able to do that. The chess of those days is still on the chess of nowadays. I mean, now you have to master the act of moving those keys on magnetic board. It takes technology. So don't blame technology. Don't blame internet for your slackness. Blame your lack of diligence. You don't have control. Every time, any time of the day you can browse. No! There should be a time to pray. There should be a time to study. There should be a time to study, not to, not to, be, not to be ashamed later in the future. If you are a student today, this message is for you, times two. There should be a time to prepare yourself. You can't be coming for first class or second class upper and be and be wasting your days like every other student contesting for Miss Campus, Miss I mean, Mr. Campus contesting for presidency in your department. No, you are too busy for that. What brought you to the house of a gold? I mean, goldsmith is not what I was calling. Come, have you seen somebody that 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 was called in the house of a goldsmith? That fire is too much for call. No, it will burn it to ashes. You can't go to the house of a blacksmith with yam to be roasted. That fire is too much. You must know why you are alive. You are a young man. You are, you are, you are a married man, young man below 40. I was speaking somewhere to a friend who broke 40 on Friday. And I was telling them life begins at 40. But unfortunately, 40 is a is a revelation of how you have used your life in the past years. If you have used, used your life in a rough and loose and slack way, 40 and above begin to show it. And that, that is why they say fool. I mean, that, that, that a fool at 40 is a fool forever. Because some people are just waiting for that age 40 to showcase their foolishness and their madness. If that will not be your portion or that of your children. You are 25 now, rejoice. Put your best into life. Do something with your life. The Bible says, great are the children of the womb, and great are the fruit of the womb. Happy is that man whose quiver is full of them. Amen. But you know something, there is a time to give back to children. 
And you don't say, if at 40, you are still thinking of giving back to children. If at 45, you are still praying of giving as a woman. Amen. I get what I'm saying. Certain time is already going, is going, is already good, except there is a problem. And now we sympathize and we pray for recovery. But if there's no problem and you are just wasting time, I want to enjoy my husband more. I want to enjoy my husband till 50. When by the time you want to give back, my like God, complications upon complications. Because there's a time for every purpose on that event. You will not miss your time. Yeah. Guess what? If somebody like me now wants to squeeze myself into the uniform of the best secondary school in Lagos, even though it's the best secondary school in Lagos, I will be a nuisance in that school. Because when they are thinking of chemistry, I'll be thinking of my children's school fees. Children's food. How to take care of my wife. Because as a secondary school student, you're not supposed to have a wife. Let alone having many children. Let alone having to pay your bills. But because I wasted my time the last 20 something years, and now I'm in secondary school, squeezing myself into a uniform that I should have worn 25 years ago, shaving so that they will not know I am over age. You. And there's no way you will shave some, some mustache and some beards. It will remind you of God, etc. They will literally remind you. You will not waste your time. Say, I will not waste my time. The Bible says, You become a poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent maketh a rich. Give me the next one Proverbs 12 24. Are you writing the scriptures down? Please do. Proverbs 12 24. The hand of the diligent shall be a rule, but the slothful, the lazy, shall be on that tribute. It is now worse when the tribute of the person you are under was somebody you were that, that was once your classmate. You, you attended the same lectures. You ran in the same lecture theaters. You, 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 you stayed up late together in the night. But now you were diligent in the last 10 years. You were lazy, you were NFA, no future ambition in the last 10 years. So now you have to be saying, sir, yes, sir, yes, ma, to them. That will not be your life. That will not be the life of your children. But the answer is not just in amen, it's in diligence today. Our children hear this message, be diligent. Showcase diligence. Work with your mind, work with your hands, and the Lord will help you. Proverbs 13 verse 4, the next one. Proverbs 13 verse 4, I'm going to 11. Proverbs 13 verse 4, 13 verse 4. The soul of the slugger desires. Ah, you see them singing, Dangote, Lodi Meji, Adegala, Lodi Meji. What Dangote and Adegala have done? Have you done one tenth? So why are you desiring what they have? And you know, I've ever Bugatti. If you know, even Benz and you can't, you can't have. You know what Bugatti is? It's an exotic car. You don't, you don't even bring it on some roads. You can't use it on some roads. It's made for roads that are so, so clean, so wet tarred. No bumps, no, 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 no control. Now you're thinking, I need to drive Bugatti. It's a desire that will never come to because you are, you are a slow guy. In order for your desire to come true, the Bible says, your soul must be diligent. The soul of the diligent shall be made far. Your desires come true. Say, so, well, one day I will build my house in Lagos. Ask the same person, what is, the, what is your plan? Are you saving for, for, for your building? Are you saving for land? No. When is that the land we appear? Which land we appear? In the fire or in the community? Where will it appear from? No, it doesn't happen that way. There must be a plan backed up by diligence. The next scripture, please help me. Give me Proverbs 22, verse 29. Still on Proverbs 22, verse 29. Proverbs 22, verse 29. Popular scripture, we often read this. Often, this is, the Bible says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? Have you seen a man diligent in his business? The Bible says, He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before the men. The word mean men is ordinary men. Vain men. Hello? Do you know something? You are as rich as how much diligence you put into what you do. True of us. If you are lazy, you can't be rich. If money mistakenly enters your hand, it's a mistake. It will disappear again. Have you seen people that want that, that 40 million naira? Maybe in the Bonanza or in any whatever. 
Naira beds or Niger beds. And after two weeks, they are back to square one, begging for 40 Naira a day. Because they are never diligent in any business. Even when that huge money comes, their mind will never think of starting something, investing something, tying this money down. No, their mind will think of let's let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. This call for celebration. As if celebration is a new word in the dictionary. They just want to drink wine. They, they, they just want to pop champagne. Seest thou a man, a woman, a pastor, a businessman? Guess what? Who patronizes your grace, your business, is a function of how diligent you are. If you are not diligent, nobody will patronize you. The people with that will patronize you will be people like you, lazy people like you. I was talking to a pastor when I heard that he said, God said I should not walk. And I said, I'm not contesting the fact that God said or what did God say. But if it is the God that I know, he didn't tell you that no. It's your lazy mind that, that is not you. That is no work. If you don't work in this economy as a pastor in Lagos or in any city of the world, you become a burden on that church. Yes. Two of us. Imagine they coming and say, okay, we are giving three offerings this morning. Three offerings. Why? We must square that debt. We, we must we must square my car. You must I, I want to buy a new tire to my car. It's my car or not, not, not your car. But because I'm not working, I become a liability on you. And I said, even the members we have, if they are mistaken in which they will run away from your church, because after a while you say, Pastor, your own is too much. We need to, we, we need to run away from you. Are you getting me? Let alone, you are not a pastor. You are just, you are just a brother in church. And you, are, and you are claiming that one day I will become a pastor, so I want to begin to practice now. I'm not going to walk. Who are you? Paul said, eat and we not walk, should not eat. The Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. He shall not stand before me, men. Proverbs 11 27, the next one. Every. Proverbs 11 27. I want to drum this diligence into our lives this morning. Everybody must return back to diligence. Let us stop wishing. Oh, if some money is paid to my account now, all of a sudden, you know, we have crazy wishes. They are pursuing a, they are pursuing, let's, let's just assume they are pursuing, they are pursuing a criminal with money. And he drops the money to our company when I'm doing prayer work. Who stupid prayer work are you I will just carry the money, I will sanctify it, I will go to my bedroom, I will even sleep on it, put it under my bed. Really? Is that how it comes? Or they are pursuing a criminal and he throws the money into a forest and I'm in that forest, we will. You mean you don't have the toilet in your house? Instead of wishing like that, why not do something with your brain? In Yoruba, they say, Oh, Taba for where you should shelf no man. What you work for with your hand lasts. Not the one you wish for. I just go on the road and I see or take the along the road. You can't see or take the road. It doesn't trek. I just meet that putty and it just eats me. I say, Sorry, sorry for eating you. Is it blind? He said, It's like car. If he eats you by his car, you are dead. But it's not ordinary car. I just came on the way and I put it just slap me. Say, ah, for slapping you, tell me the better. Crazy, lazy wishes. Let's do this again. I want to go. He that diligently seeketh good procureth favor. But he that seeketh mischief, he shall come unto him. One of the mischief that young men seek is these crazy wishes, crazy ideas, crazy, crazy desires. But I would say, he that diligently seeketh good. Can we have some silence, please? He that diligently seeketh good procureth favor. For he that seeketh mischief, he shall call upon. You will not see mischief in your generation. Can we take some more? Galatians 6, verse 9. Galatians 6, verse 9. Allah man goes to pray. And let us not be weary. In well doing. Somebody say, but Pastor, I know hard work is good, but what about when you are doing hard work for a, for, for a boss who does not recognize you? I've been there before too. Keep doing it. Keep working your 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 self house. A time is gonna come. If that boss does not recognize you, somebody somewhere will recognize because whatever you read, you will sow. You may not be where you are sowing now, but you will live somewhere. But the Bible did not say, or that Lord does not say where you live, 
Where you sow is where you reap. No. You can sow in the north and come and reap in the south. Is that clear? Joseph reaped, I mean, sold in his father's house. Where did you reap? Egypt. But one thing is sure whatever you sow, whatever, not wherever, whatever you sow, if you sow diligent, you must reap abundance and eminence. Let us not be weary in well doing. Ah, why? For inducing. A time will come when the atmosphere will be ripe. A time will come when the relative humidity will be 100%. Did you see the rain that fell on Friday to Saturday? I always love to tell my boys the weather chart for each day. One day I was to take them to school and I was telling them 730 is going to start getting so this is 705, let us start moving now. And I meant because I, I, have, I had read the, the, the weather chart for that day. I saw that in a demo show it's going to come by 7.30 going on. So I, I always take my time to study that. So that evening on Friday I said, it's going to rain this evening. Look at the weather chart, we have 90% rainfall. It's very unusual. When you have a 90% rainfall, it's going to fall in less than two hours. And guess what? In the middle of the night, around, around 10, 11, that rain started. You know, that rain did not stop until daybreak. God bless you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let us not be weary. For in due season, you are the one saying, my boss is not seeing me. He's not noticing me. You keep laboring. Keep pushing. Don't distract me that, please. Keep pushing. A time is going to come that everybody will, 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 will notice you. The person that is not noticing you today, is because maybe they are waiting for you to rise, to see do more, to see to see exact yourself more, to see do a better version of yourself. And before you know what is happening, you will see that people that seem to despise you, they will come and sing your praise tomorrow. In the name of Jesus Christ. So are you laboring? And it seems the word is not coming. The Bible is still faithful. God is still faithful. Just keep at it. Don't stop. Hello? Hello? Don't what? Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. For in due season, my God, you shall leave it. When we started Sunday service, after six months, I said to myself, I'm not sure I let go. Maybe I should go back to Dunamis. I should be going to Dunamis on Sunday. Because we were doing well on Thursday. Why did I think God spoke to me that we should start Sunday service? First Sunday service with us, maybe 13 or so. We had dedication that day. That gave me some joy. Two babies in dedication. One is still with us till today. The second one, I think they have gone to somewhere else. Amen. So after some weeks, we got to see what's going on. Those that came first week say, yeah, we are going back to our churches. We just came to celebrate with you. Okay. Guest members and guest ministers. After six months, I was like, am I sure this Sunday service will make sense? So I spoke to my father and I said, don't ever stop doing what is good that you have been doing. Keep doing it. He said, he said to me, he said, how does a footballer master the art of jogging ball? I said, by keep on, by keeping on jogging the ball. So, so keep on jogging in the midst of the spirit. Keep on preparing your messages. Don't be slack on any Sunday. Dress well, dress sharply. Preach very well. Come with fire every Sunday. After a while, the members will start calling. By the time we hit third year, fourth year, wow. Sunday services. That was when we started second service. Are you listening? Second service when we were not, I mean, a time it was several months before we were struggling to even do more service. What am I trying to say? If you don't stop because of disappointment, because of weariness, because of, of, of weariness and tiredness, just keep at it. Keep at it. Keep pushing. The time comes, we call it due season. You shall reap it if you fail it not. Let me give us some more. 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. Wow. The time is well spent. Study to show. Are you a student? Are you a businessman? Are you a pastor? Hello? One of the things I tell people is that. When you listen to me teach on a Sunday morning, it's more than me just sharing Bible. Life experiences, things that are even beyond Bible, things that are life applicable. 
that even when you are thinking on your own, when you remember your pastor's voice or messages, wisdom surges in you. That is the kind of pastor I want to remain. I don't want to be a pastor that comes to church saying, uh, let's open the Bible to Genesis 84 verse. And people and the media team is wondering 84. They sat, they brought their computer, Genesis ended at 50. And they wanted 84. Pastor is high this morning, 84. You know. And when they didn't give anything, you didn't say it, okay, give me Exodus 72. Ah. They brought again. Ah. Put this 72. Pastor is high. Amen. Say, so, uh, don't worry, don't worry. Leave the Bible alone. Let me just tell you a story. Will you come next Sunday? Bros, will you come? You know you love me so much. If you say, no, no, no. He's my brother. I will show solidarity. After a while, you become tired. This person that is calling Exodus 100. Not Psalms. If it's Psalms, you understand. Do your due, due diligence. Do your own work. Not just as a pastor, as a businessman. You are coaching for a job. Maybe you are a real estate guy. And you are coaching for a job in Festa or in Lagos here. Or in any part of Lagos, in any part of Nigeria, or in Abuja. And you are missing words. Say, are you sure this land has a sea of hope? I'm not, I, think, I think it has sea of hope. You want to sell to me and I say, I think, no. You should be sure if it has a sea of hope. Okay, I want to rent three bedroom flat or three four bedroom duplex. And I'm asking you a question about the guest, the guest toilet downstairs. What is the state of this? Yeah. It's no longer ah, it was at the one year. Ah, I want to rent from you. You are not correct. You are not, you have not studied. You are not studious in law. So you must always have shame. Study to show yourself a proof to God. A workman that needed to be ashamed. Writing the value As a student, there's a way you can read. I had the privilege of preparing my students for biology exam. Several months ago, I announced to you that the question that will come at the only go showed me, and I told them the specimen. When I got to their school two weeks ago, a girl said, Sir, you are a prophet. I said, No, I'm just a child of God. He said, No, you are a prophet. What you said will come out is the specimen that our teacher has told to me. I said, Well, I knew it that they will come out. Hello? And when I began to react, I mean to react with them, revise with them, I said, they will ask you for this thing. Do it this way, do this way. After the exam, they all went to meet their director. Say no, that is the I on something else. Please, please. We want to buy, we want to thank him, we want to appreciate him. No, no, no. This is just God and his Holy Spirit. But it's not just the Holy Spirit. I am also student. When you see me reading biology textbook, you will think I have exams. Because I can't. I hate entering the class and I'm holding the notes. I was taught by a teacher that was reading notes. I hated biology for that. But when I was taught by a teacher in the university who will not carry a note and we bamboozle everybody with biology and with chemistry, it will make your teacher to look stupid. That's that natural. That guy was so brilliant. I said, no, I want to become like this guy. If I ever teach a day, I want to become. And that, and that dream came true. When I enter a class today, I don't need a book. I don't need it because I have I have read everything I will read at home and I am already smoking and burning. When I enter a class, even the teacher will sit there and take notes. Are you getting me? It's not right. Because I have started to show myself. And the, and the result of the student is there to show in the last three years. I get what I'm saying. Please study. Be diligent. Don't be a businessman just by having business card, complimentary card. Too many complimentary cards in the dustbin. Hello? Know your onions. Know your onions. Know what you do. I say, I, I, am, on, I am an online marketer. I am an online influencer. I am an internet. I am I just, I just having names, title. No man to. Hello? Study. Be diligent. Do research. That smartphone is not just for chatting, it's for researches. Do research. What is the way of doing real estate? How do they do real estate in the advanced world now? How do you market this product now? What do you do to convince a buyer? You know there are many people that are poor salesmen. If they tell you to buy something you don't want to buy, because you will ask a simple question. Have you used this product before? Uh, uh, they don't want to say no. Uh, 
tomorrow I will buy, I will use no, you have failed. All your own works, you have not done it before you brought to me. You can't convince me to buy. I want to part with 2.5 million dollars to buy your product, and you are telling me, eh, you are scratching your head as, as if you have the palapa. No, you can't sell to me. I can't part with my money that way. Stop it! It's diligent. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. How, where, and in what areas should we be diligent as Christians? Number one, three areas. Number one, diligence in our service to God. First Corinthians 15, verse 58. You must be diligent in your service to God. Be diligent in your service to God. Be that member that your pastor can vouch for, that your head of department can vouch for. If there's a meeting of my department, if our department, sanctuary department, is supposed to clean the church on Saturday morning, I know Mrs. Soso will be there. Even if me, the leader, if I'm caught up in traffic, I know Sister Soso will be there, Brother Soso will be there. Don't be that member that breaks your age of this heart. Are you getting what I'm saying? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your diligence, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Say, I will not serve the Lord in vain. But guess what? You must serve him diligently. There's a way to serve the Lord. That even God will know this guy is hard working. The way you serve your master, the E.T. of a bank. Hello? The M.T. of a bank. The way you detail her. Sabs, even on Saturday, you are the ATM putting things in order so that so that so that the ATM will not jam, they, so that they will not call you on a Sunday morning and you will not miss your service. The same way when you come to church on Sunday, don't be sleeping in the service. Serve the Lord acceptably. Pour yourself into whatever they do. You see, when you are here now and we cannot feel you, when you are not here, we will miss you. Right now, when you are here and we cannot feel you. If you live here, we won't miss you. Say, say it in, in another way. If your presence cannot be felt, your absence will not be missed. In a family, come and watch late, you are always complaining. Am I the only one? Am I the only one? Am I the only one? Let, us, let everybody be watching their plate. You know, there, there was a time our children would say, Daddy, I think the best thing, this, this washing made is very hard. Let everybody, I say, including your mommy, and it's exercise for you now. Just go to the sink, wash the plate, and raise it in your own way. You are wrong. The person that even said it is inside. <laughs> Amen. Let everybody be washing their plates. Because they don't want to. You might thought I would say, no, my father didn't wash plates for me. I won't wash for you. You have to wash your plates. Their mommy asked me, their mommy traveled over the weekend. I told them, you, you are the one cooking. How you cook it is when we eat it. As it's cooking, it's in the, in the, the food you are cooking is almost burnt, so I won't touch it. The salt you put is the salt we eat. So they know me. I get what I'm saying. I can't say because there is no girl. All the boys are not useless. No, you must you must sweep. You must do everything that a girl will ever do. I get what I'm saying. The same thing do for your children. This is children's day. Because, uh, it's my mommy that washes, that brushes my teeth. Ten year old. 10 year old. So if the mommy is not around, my, I will wait till my mommy comes. So we won't we the Lord will give us peace in Jesus' name. Diligence in our service to God. Pour yourself into it. Because your service to God now will pay dividends to God. It may not be in Lagos, it may be in San Paris State. It may be in another state. But serve the Lord acceptably now. Number two. Diligence in bringing out the best in us, in ourselves. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10. Give me that one again. We are ready for me again. Diligence in bringing out the best in ourselves. Whatever you do, there is still a better version of you yet to be unveiled. Yes. So it takes diligence. Ah, I still remember. There was a there was a level of preaching I used to have some, some years back. Even me myself, I was I was disgusted by that level of preaching. When I listen to my message, I say, wow. You missed some points. You missed some scriptures. I'm better now. But, but, but guess what? I'm still not my best. I'm still... My preparation of today, you can't see it now. The result we show tomorrow. The result you are seeing today is the preparation of tomorrow. I mean, of yesterday. 
So keep improving. It takes a level of diligence to buy books and read. There are books on my study desk which I must read every week. There are podcasts, messages I must listen to. There are chapters of the Bible on audio Bible I must listen to. I've led members of this church to finish the Bible from cover to cover, not less than four times now. We are on the fifth row now. I know we are finished the New Testament. We are in the Old Testament again now. We just finished Psalms. Ecclesiastes is where we are now. Am I correct, sir? So I can't be leading people and I'm, and I'm not reading my own Bible. It's not possible. I'm on a regime, an exercise of becoming better on a daily basis. So you can't be less as a member of this church. The Lord will give us grace in Jesus' name. Number three. But don't forget the scripture, whatsoever your hand find it to do, do it with that. That crutch, man, of two children today can become 20 tomorrow. It depends on you. The difficulty of replacing you is what makes clients fall. Hello. When I pray for people, the reason why they always come back is they look around, it's, it's, it's not right. They say, no, the way that man attended to us, we are going back to him. It may not be the best prophet, it may not be the best seer. But there was something he said. There was a presentation. I was taught. I was taught this thing. And I taught myself. Manner of approach. You don't shout on people on the phone. People you have not seen before. Because they are customers. No. Don't, don't think you are that special. Hello? Difficulty in replacing you is what determines how well do you be. If it's so difficult in replacing you, ah, money will keep coming in. But if they can find replacement of you 50 times, because money is, is, is going to be. You will not lose money. I'll see you when you say it again. Number three, diligence in our service to others. Colossians 3 23. Diligence in our service to other people. In any way we are serving people, whether you are a businessman, as a pastor, I'm serving you now. As a businessman, you are serving your clients, you are serving your customers. There is a level of diligence. I ate it even as a pastor when I go to a shopping mall or to a store and a little girl is standing there and I'm talking to you. You are you are you are even as young to be but younger than the age of our last boy. And I'm talking to you and you are chatting on the phone. I'm a customer. Customers are kings. I'm talking to you, you are chatting on the phone. Let's say I'm coming. No, I know what to do. I'll just go to your boss or the leader. This guy or this girl does not fit this place. He's going to ruin your establishment. That is a very bad record to give concerning the worker. In no, in no time, the person will lose his job. Because once one person can complain, two can complain, three complain, you are out of that establishment. You are selling food, and I come to you, and you are pumping your hair as you are selling food to me. You like buy? No, now, I'm not that hungry. Maybe you want me. I'll just say, no, don't worry, I'll come back. But you are doing your hair and see you are one African queen. I'm married, I don't need you. I get what I'm saying? Sell food for me. Don't, don't do your hair like this. Sell food for me. But there, there's a way you dress that you cannot even serve me. I get what I'm saying? Uh, in serving others, level of diligence. Especially people that we don't see, they need much more respect from us. You, you don't know how great that man is. Maybe you are talking, you are interfacing between a billionaire. And because he's on the phone, you can't see his face. Not video call, just audio. We are not talking anyhow. It's not compulsory, sir. If, if, if you cannot buy, there are many people selling. Ah. Hey. That means you are, you, are a, you are a trillionaire already. Why are you selling? Close your shop and go, go, to, go to Miami, Florida. Go, go to one of the, the islands and go and have three weeks break. And the man will say, hey, wow, I never knew. So you are this rude. Okay, you he hear from me. And he become a person to show you I'm a multi billionaire. I was bringing a multi billionaire, a multi billion naira business to your organization. But your rudeness of the phone was amazing. You now come to church. Oh, Lord, forgive me. No, 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 we say. Don't let me say anything. <laughs> so you say, How do you know God will say that? But God, God will almost slap you. Look at the opportunity you ruin the day. After seven days of fasting and prayer, I brought this man again. But your 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 your, your lack of diligence in serving others ruined everything. May you be wise again. Finally, faithfulness. Capacity to show yourself to be trustworthy. 
you want to be eminent, you want to be up, you want to have abundance, you want to be flourishing this season and beyond, be faithful. What is faithfulness? Give me Luke 16 10. Three scriptures here as I close. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Luke 16 10. Somebody with a stomach pain that comes and goes. Check it now, it will never record again. Yeah. When it comes, it strikes you. This left side of your tummy. That's right. It will never return again in the name of Jesus. Many yeah. accurate. It will never return again in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Luke 16 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust. In the least is a just also in God. Is a is a law. Somebody say, God, you don't know what I can do. I can kill myself for you. And God is saying, Ah, God, I can die for you. You know some of the things we do when we are high. I can kill myself for Jesus. And you say, Okay. You now bring a tablet guy. A tablet guy with a dagger in his pocket. Jesus on your life. So you're going to slow down, slow down, calm down. What's the meaning of that? Freedom was rich in Nigeria. So no, I'm not I'm not joking, I'm serious. I removed the dagger from the sheep. Jesus on your life. Do you not remember that your eye pain statement? God, I can die for you. You remember that no, I was playing dead, I was playing dead, I was playing dead. I get what I'm saying. Faithfulness is the capacity to be trusted. When Peter was saying to Jesus, anywhere you go, I will go. Anywhere you die, I will die. I can never deny you. <laughs> Jesus knew. He was saying, no way. I have prayed for you. For when you recover, strengthen your prayer. Ah. Peter said, no, I will never deny you. When he remembered those words, after he has denied Jesus, he said, ah, oh, this too is said it to you. Now we have to pray for forgiveness. The best of all, faithfulness is the key. If you want greater height, God is always, you see, God will always test us with faithfulness. There's a faithfulness test you and I must never fail. As a pastor, there's a faithfulness test. Hello? Hello? Faithfulness over the members. Faithfulness in the place of prayer and study. There is no Sunday latest by Sunday very early in the morning, my message is ready. If for any reason, because of engagement and some, some, some family functions, ministration outside, it was not ready by Friday, Saturday, Sunday morning very early, everything was being placed. You can't catch me with an open. If that is why you always see me opening notes on Sunday. If there's nothing here, I will be, I mean, will I be reading? There's something on this event. But my pastor said, no, the Holy Spirit will lead me. The spirit, the, the spirit will guide you. I will just open my mouth wide, and you will feel it. This mosquito and house like an enter. This is that we enter your mouth. Proverbs twenty verse six, seven scripture on faithfulness. Say, I'll be faithful. Are you serving a master now? And the master is wicked to you. Is wicked. He's not wicked. He's training you. Imagine the story that, that, that I told you. Serving for seven years, all of a sudden, that guy ended up marrying the daughter of his boss. Six million naira, a shop in Alaba International Market, and access to all this home and pick something. You know when you go to some people shop, they will tell you this thing. I don't have it, but my brother has it. Say so you can come from your shop and come to my shop. Since I am importing directly, till you get to that level, you can always call. That is access. It takes faithfulness. If you have been stealing from the master today, you better stop because you are cutting short your destiny. Are you serving someone? I won't serve the master too. To the level of my best ability, I serve them with faithfulness. There is no fear or shame in meeting them today. Those pastors, my colleagues, and my seniors that we meet and we embrace ourselves because nobody was hurt. When it was time to part ways and disengage, it was done peacefully, no fight. There was even a set forth, there were gifts. A former car was a gift. Take it. You have served this church. God bless you. Are you getting me? For you, you are you are leaving the church. Hello? You have you have you have taken all the members of that church away first. 
Your pastor traveled to London before he came back. You have received your vision, your Luciferian vision. In just seven days of journey, three days, you have done your own ID card, your complimentary card, your signboard. Ha. You have gotten a venue. You have paid one year rent. Daddy, I'm just waiting for you to come back. I don't want to go before I me mean, until you come back. Ah. And I've rented a hall. No, no, you are not fit. You are not fit. You know that these are my customers. These are the customers of my boss. Don't go near them. Even if they come to meet you, there is a way to run away from them. Except they now insist that no, they want to do business with you. And it will be on record. But no, you are the one calling them. My master is old. Come on, is it me? We are the new school. Come on, come and meet me. I know what to tell you. No, it's not the case. Proverbs 20 verse 6. Most men, look at this. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. But a faithful man will have fun. A faithful servant. A faithful uh, employee who can find. Can your boss travel for three months and his mind is at peace? One day, when I was a pastor in Congress Assembly, a young girl, maybe not, not older than me, maybe my age mate, brought a very large envelope. I was a PA to my senior pastor. Brought a very, and my senior pastor had traveled to the US. So just me and other pastors in the office. I was a full time pastor. There. And he brought, said, God told me, the game was crying. Never time before me, God told me to go and empty my account and brought this money for the church project that we were doing. I said, wow. Even me myself, I was shocked. I said, wow, what a level of sacrifice. I prayed for her, received the money, kept the money, blah, blah, blah. And I called my pastor, sent a message. We received this sacrifice. One of the men comes and why do you have to call that straight away like that? Ah, we are we are not even decided on what to do with the money. He said, What are we doing with the money? It's not about money. He said, No, no, your own is too much. No, 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 no. He said, What is too much? Here? So I never knew that some, some people were expecting no. Let us let us even count the money fair before you even pay that. He said, No. Some of them are still paying. Faithfulness. Give me Proverbs 28:20. This is my last scripture as I go. 20 years, 20, 20. Until I close this note, I will always have something to say. Look at this. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Anytime you read this picture, remember the story of Naaman. And who is that guy? Deaza. He was hasty to be rich. My prophet, my master, my Lord Bishop, say Naaman should go with all this gold, silver, change of raiment. No, I will go back. And he went behind Elisha to go and collect his things. And Elisha said, Did my eye not go with you when he went to collect his things? Behold, the leprosy. Ah, the leprosy of Naaman is still in the atmosphere. He will land upon you now and all your generation for you. So when you see any leper, they are from you. They are sad. When you are hasty to be rich, you will never be in yourself. You will be guilty. But the Bible says, a faithful man, your ways may be slow, but be faithful. You will, you will eventually abound in this. Especially when you are serving someone who is your blood. You know, we have tendency, maybe your, your father is the one that owns the business. You know, the business is our family business. I can take any money now. No, don't. Relax, calm down. This money you are itching to take now, very soon you come taking it to you. Don't spoil your image. The Bible says a good name is better to be chosen than silver and gold. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So, what are the three levels of diligence? Number one, diligence in our service to God. Number two, diligence in bringing out the best in ourselves. Number three, diligence in serving others. May you be diligent in these three areas in the name of Jesus. Sometimes, faithfulness is when nobody is seeing you. Pastor does not know when you are tithing. Hello? Hello? Apart from the fact that we call people out, there are people that, that, that are not even members of this church that you have not, that even me myself have not seen before. It's only their names I keep seeing in the church account record every month as a recurring decimal. And I'm wondering, Lord, what will you do to this man? Every month, year in, year out, he has been tithing in this ministry. Faithfulness. Even when Pastor does not know him, except for his name. When I see them and they say, I am Mr. Ah, okay, God bless you, sir. 
la vie de l'homme d'Afrique c'est que je suis dans le monde. Faithfulness does not mean, Pastor, you, you need to, I need to let you know that I have been the one transferring the five million dollars every day. I just want you to let you know. I just want to let you know. In case you are doubting me, it's not a ghost to it's me. So sometimes I, I need you to be, there's a way you should be treating me in church. When I'm coming, I need a special seat beside you. No, my God, tell me, Joe. Is uh, of course, it's not easy to bring five million at every month. Now. So I need a special seat beside you. And your summons, I want to maybe on Saturday, just want to summons by me so that we both agree that message will flow. Uh, that's not faithfulness. Regardless of the amount you are giving, faithfulness is doing it behind the scenes when the world is watching. You don't need to come and tell me as a pastor, Pastor, do you know I'm praying for you? You have had your reward. If you are praying for your pastor, keep praying for him. God that sees in secret, the Bible says, we watch where? Open the back. Don't be bragging, Pastor, if not for me, pray for you, you will have died. Last week I saw a dream that they stabbed you. But I cancelled that dream in Jesus' name. And you think that is why I said that I like, ah! Say, Pastor, because of me, you have you not died. Okay. And she will ever have a girl. Anyway, that's not the best thing to go about. Just keep it to yourself and be faithful with the little one. And the Lord will be able to Jesus. Shall we rise to our feet? Shall we rise to our feet? So much has been said this morning. Lord, give me grace to be faithful. Abundant grace to be faithful. Even in parenting, I don't want to mislead these young ones. You know, as parents, if we are not careful and we are not faithful, we can mislead our children because of the wrong values. You are fighting with your neighbor and your children are aware of this fight. You are bringing them into the fight and you are telling your children, don't greet, don't greet our children. We are enemies. The friend of my enemies is still my enemy. You know, you know, you know we say that in sense. No, don't bring those children into this. Lord, grace to be faithful. In my service to you, Lord, number one. In bringing out the best in me as a businessman, as a career person, as a pastor. And number three, in service to others. To serve humanity with my gift, help me to Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Allah will go to the time. Say something to us. Let the book of the sheet of the book of the sheet of the I receive grace to be faithful. I receive grace to be faithful. I receive grace to be faithful. Oh, I receive grace to be faithful. I receive grace to be faithful. I receive grace to be diligent, to work on myself more. There is precious thing in me, precious gold in me, but I need to subject myself to some work, refinery, fawnings of fire. I receive grace to wake up late, to wake up early in the morning and read and study and pray. I receive grace to sit up late as a student and read. And prepare for my glorious future. All of my so that your grace will not be in vain. Paul said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. He said, I am what I am by the grace of God, but I never more abundantly than they all. He said, but not I, but the grace that was given to me. I will not frustrate the grace of God. Rabba, Baba, Baba.